Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of All Access Pass from Home. I am your virtual cruise host, Jason Venner, and uh, today I get to sit down with the one and only Mr. Tony Cornelius. First and foremost, Tony, how are you feeling today, sir? I'm doing really well, Jason. Thank you. You know, you haven't, you haven't skipped a beat. Not only do you <laughs> say good things things about me on the on the sea you say good things about me on land so man, that, I, I appreciate you my brother good platitudes and good things are easy to come by when it comes to you uh <laughs> i can tell you that right now it's it's uh, it's good to see you it's it's obviously been uh what uh, four months three and a half months since i've seen you how have you been yeah 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 it's been uh since uh, i guess january january yeah january, early january, sometime, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah it's been uh this has been a crazy time as you know and it's, uh it's been a lot I, I think more people are smiling now even though they're at home because they're starting to figure out how to work this thing out you know yeah you know i, I think with anything there's a balance to your point you, you know when you're if you're not used to being home this much, or if you're not used to being home, and we were just laughing about this, if you're not used to being home with your kids or your spouse or your pets, or you know, if you're confined into a space with other people or other things you're not used to, it's a little bit of a growing pain, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I've, I've spent a lot of time with the family and you know, we're playing games and doing all kinds of stuff. I'm, actually, I'm even cooking a little more, you know? Stop it. I did some shepherd's pie, some black Stop eyed peas, some some cornbread, some some pasta. I mean, I, you know, hey, you know, I'm doing it Tony, all. Tony, listen, the one thing I told you before we started the video is you can't get on here and lie to people. That's all I said you can't do. You can't get on here and start telling untruths. You're cooking. What motivated you to start cooking? Just to take some pressure off the other folks? No, I, I've always kind of wanted to kick it around a little bit. And my, my family challenges me sometimes because they don't think I, I got skills. <laughs> but, you know, I don't even read the directions. I just do it by feel, you know? So, hey, you know, I, that's when you know you got skills, buddy. Either that or you've thrown a lot of things away, one or the other. Yeah, <laughs> well, but I've got, uh, I've got pictures to prove, okay? I always well, take pictures of okay. my work, okay? <laughs> of my work, okay. <laughs> I need to, listen, my phone is right here. I expect to see a text any minute with some pictures. As soon as we're done listen, with this. Hey, hey, listen, don't challenge me because I'll send you a picture, buddy, all right? You, Bring it. Let's go. Let's okay. go. Well, while we're on this, while we're on this call, you'll be getting a couple. Okay, of pictures. I'll take it. Okay. Listen, I made your right. show them to the people that are watching this. That's that's, that's fine. I'm, 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 listen, <laughs> I'm down. Listen, I'm down. Let me say the other thing I'm most, I'm arguably more impressed by than the fact that you're doing all this great cooking is you got a good looking goatee, little beard going there, man. No, oh, man, you just missed, you just missed me that because I said. Jason, can you see this new thing I got going on here? You know, I love it. Are you kidding me? That's the only reason why you mentioned it. But it, believe me, it's only you because we're indoors. Once we, once this is all over, this is coming off, buddy. Okay. You look good. That's all. This is my quarantine beard. I'm there with you. I, I hear uh, you. Well, you're just showing off because you can grow it full and thick. So, so what? Because you look like Santa Claus. So what? <laughs> Listen, if we all lose our jobs, I just want to get ahead of the people to get those Santa Claus jobs. That's all I'm doing. I'm getting ahead of it. This is my prerequisite. <laughs> yeah, you so, lost you lost your shaver. That's the only reason yeah, why you got to be. Yeah, there. that's pretty much what it is. I won't <laughs> lie. We're out of, we're out of electricity. Uh you said you and the family are playing a lot of games. What are you guys playing? Well, you know, everybody's doing this TikTok thing. You know, my yeah. daughter's got this whole TikTok thing and we're doing it with the family and the whole thing. I, I, but she didn't air it though. She Okay. She felt like my move, my move wasn't wasn't <laughs> quite right. So she's a little afraid of that. So you're telling me there's an unreleased Tony Cornelius dance TikTok? There is an unreleased oh. deal. Yeah, we got into a big argument about it because <laughs> I did it twice and I'd like take one and she'd like take two. Oh. So because she didn't want to use take one, we never aired it. So we, we got a little thing going on here. Well, as a producer, as you yourself being a producer, what's the difference between take one and take two? You know what? That's a good question, Jason. And I'm glad you asked that. The difference is my my, my flow Ooh. was a little better. Yeah. And she, she quietly, she's only concerned about her flow and not my flow. <laughs> so her flow to her was better in take two. Got my it. flow was better in take one. And, you know, what can I say? You know? I feel like there should just be a take three. <laughs> I feel like we well, should just you know, go back we'll, we'll and figure it out one day. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I think the world would like to see that uh, when you have the time, of course. Uh, most importantly, how's your mother? 
How's she feeling? How's everything? She's doing going? well. She's, I mean, she's Good. in Chicago. Um, you know, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because those that, those moms and dads and aunties and uncles who are out there, especially in the uh, black and brown communities, uh, where they have determined that uh, we're we're our percentages are up as that. far as deaths uh, in the that. coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, due to high blood pressure, you know, obesity, as well as, um, you know, there's some uh, cholesterol uh, things, there's things, a couple things. You know, so we're, about, yeah. There's a lot of talk about uh, the black community and how we're, yeah. how we're getting beat up pretty bad when it comes to that. At the same time, you know, there were some reports that, you know, black people didn't catch the coronavirus, you know, and <laughs> I, I, was, I was actually, I was watching Magic Johnson on CNN yeah. last night. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and he brought up a, a good point that sometimes influencers yeah. who have millions of followers, uh, they say things and people believe it. Yeah. And there, there was some that said that we don't catch the coronavirus and it's just not true. Those you are know? the same people that try to convince you that black folks can't get sunburned. <laughs> no question about it. Right. So it's, it's that you know, asinine that's, that's middle view. Of, like, what are you talking there's about? There's a lot of information out there that we yeah. need to we really need to analyze and we need to believe, you know? So yeah. I'm, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I want to talk about that. And it's something that I, I, I take very seriously because it's, this is no joke, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I'd also venture that, you know, you obviously have the Don Cornelius foundation out there and you know, this is a, this has got to be a fairly trying time. I, I would imagine that uh, you're experiencing some phone calls. You know, people are going through some things right now and they're experiencing some stuff that, you know, not to get too heavy, but, you know, they're experiencing some things and there's, there's some stress and well, some weight well, no, on no, people right no now. No question. I've had some conversations with the, also with the uh, American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, which I'm a national board member, and we're currently trying, developing a, a diversity task force. At the same time, uh, the leaders of that organization in particular are, are concentrating on how we can focus more on diversity and uh, mental health uh, during this time. I yeah. mean, it's, this, this thing sprouted out into all kinds of areas, you know? Yeah. And, and we're, it's a learning curve at the same time. It's only been three weeks or so. I mean, yeah, you know, sure. last month, the month before, you know, I was doing everything and any and anything that I could do to stay outside and, you know, and taking it for granted, be around a lot of people. And now all of a sudden, within two weeks, it's like, you know, we're wearing masks and gloves, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, uh, and it's just crazy just going to the supermarket and people yes. walking, you know, trying to stay away from each other. It's just, it's just, it's just feels so, so odd right now, you know? It does. You know, I, I think that, uh, I think it's interesting because I, I do think, and I was, I, I don't know if you and I were talking about this last time we, we chatted, but there really are three points to this, right? There's the underreaction, there's the overreaction, and then there's the, and I'm going to use the word a healthy middle reaction, because I'm not to disparage either side of it, but, you know, there's those people who are buying all the toilet paper and the canned food and are, you know, securing their bunker. And then there's those that are still partying at the beach and don't really think they think they're, you know, above it and beyond it. And then there's everyone in the middle, you know, and granted, there's a gray area in there that for the most part is trying to keep their six feet of social distance and trying to be mindful of the masks and, and whatnot. And one of the things that I've experienced a lot of, and, and I'd love to know your thoughts and to see if, if your community and your folks that are that uh, the people that you talk to regularly I'm seeing a lot of positivity though. I, I'm seeing a lot of people find ways to stay engaged. I'm seeing a lot more entertainment, you know, avenues. A lot of people now have time on their hands. And to your point, you know, you and your daughter doing TikTok or people learning to cook or, you know, there's just people I feel like right now are taking a moment to, ex to expand a, a little bit. And, and it's interesting to see, you know, from, you know, you can't, you can't get to the rainbow without a little rain, as they say. And it, it's interesting to see what's going to come out of it, you know, how much. Right. Well, no question about it. I mean, there's, uh, it's, it's, I'm even seeing, you know, uh, TV shows being developed now, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. there's, this is, this is, we're an ecosystem. And if you know anything about that, if you look at, looked at it under a microscope, <clears throat> when there's nowhere to go, they, they find a way to create 
other paths. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like just like a tree grows, you know, when it comes to the sun. You know, it grows toward the sun. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the fact that there's no openings, they find a way. So I, I think we're finding that way, you know. Um, but it's been it's been challenging because, like you said, there are there are those that believe, those that don't believe, and then there's yeah. this middle this middle ground. Uh, I, I can honestly say I was probably one of those that 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 kind of said uh, I don't know about this. This sounds yeah. a little weird to me. And and then you know with with my daughters pushing, saying, Dad, this is real stuff, you know, all of a sudden, you know, now I'm the, the, the promoter, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I'm like, did you wash your hands? Did you, <laughs> did you keep your hands out of your face? Did you, yeah. you know, I, I'm, and she's like, wait a minute, wasn't I the one that started, you know, <laughs> she was in New York, she, she actually oh, left yeah. New York, she got out, you right? know, a week before all this kind of hit, you know, uh, so we were very concerned about her her well being also. So you know it's been uh, it's been a learning curve for all of us in a yeah. lot of different ways. You know, are you talking to many of your your relationships, uh, your artists, your you know the different artists? That well, you not know? exactly. I think I think people are really um, woodshedding, if you will, and yeah. staying to themselves. You know, yeah. um, uh, but but people do think about each other. You know, I'm yeah. getting a lot of calls from friends like, "Are you okay? How's it going? How's the family?" You know, and it's there's a lot of texting going on. You yeah. know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of phone calls going on. There's a lot of this going on. Yeah, you know? which is so, good. But, but, you know, but, I think uh, it's healthy. I hope and pray that everybody's doing great um, and that we get through this thing. You know, you you mentioned a moment ago, and I, well, first I agree wholeheartedly, and and you know we will get through this one way or another. We're going to get through this. We're going to continue on and, and, you know, hopefully we rebuild bigger and better. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago that people are producing TV shows and things like that, which is a perfect segue into American soul. Uh, you obviously tell us a little bit about American soul. I know a lot of folks know it already have seen it, but a lot of folks haven't. So introduce us to American soul. Well, we're actually, we're on, I'm glad you mentioned that we're in our second season. I mean, this is a promo. And yep. you're really good at, at segueing. <laughs> Just so, open the door. So we've got a we've got a second season coming along um, sometime in May on BET, and I think it's going to be pretty good. I think we 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 have some very challenging, interesting uh, mm-hmm. storylines. Um, you know, a lot of interactions with the the business. My father uh, character. Uh, my mother's involved as well, uh, and I think I think this is going to be a good thing. I mean, and due to the fact also that a lot of people are indoors now, you know, yeah. so it's, it's like Silver lining, people are yeah. glued to this, <laughs> this 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 TV or whatever they're looking yeah. at. And fortunately or unfortunately, I think uh, TV is is going to explode even bigger because yeah. of that. well. For those people that are watching that are not familiar, they did not see season one of American Soul, would you give us an elevator pitch on what it is exactly? Well, American Soul is about a, a man that, that, that spends his whole life trying to become uh, a, a, a television personality uh, through trials and tribulations, through the business, um through you know what sometimes they say the 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 record business is not a gentleman's business it gets a little hairy sometimes in some of his conversations and some of his meetings with different people in the business at the same time he has a heart he has a family that he has to raise he has a business that he has to run yeah. and through through all of that conflict uh you you kind of get american soul and uh uh, there's a lot of uh, personal stories that are true, and then some that are that are not so true. But I think the writers did a very good job at at, uh, at developing something that, that that's real and and uh, and heartfelt at, at the same time um, a quality a quality program. You know, and and you know, let's let's be very frank. When you say a man, you literally mean your father. This is absolutely, absolutely. Don Cornelius I mean, story, he, and I was I was there with him for most of it, you know. Um, yeah. and it was a it was a tough road because uh, it has to be. You know, he wanted he wanted me to be to understand the business at the same time respect the business, 
Um, and then he wanted to protect me from the business. Yeah. So that was a tough, that was a tough, uh, very tough, uh, a tough thing, you know? When you were starting out, when you're starting down the road of, of creating American Soul, first season, so not second, but just creating the show in general, um, did, did you have to do, for lack of better terms, did you have to do a lot of homework on your own father? Or are you pulling mostly from what you already know? Well, I, I, that's an interesting question. Um, the homework that I had to do was to try to get the writers to understand uh, that, you know, this was something very personal to me and my yeah. family, and that and the image that the image that uh, that they were trying to create had to be legitimate in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, the stories that I that I gave them are stories that are very personal, and I didn't, I didn't want it to look like um, you know we just thrown together. It was something that uh, I felt that our our audience should know at the same time should respect you know yeah because he wasn't he wasn't a he wasn't a he, he, he wasn't an angel you know he, so yeah. he had to do some things in yeah. order to survive but at the same time you kind of felt his soul so i was really i was more concerned about that uh as opposed to doing homework i mean because sure. it's it's stuck the, the homework is stuck to my ribs yeah. you know it's it's yeah. within me you know so there's things that came out during our conversations that um, that I'd never talked about before. So, you know, relationships, yeah. uh, inside business, or like they say, inside baseball. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's a homework that I had to do. Well, you, soul searching. You did a, the show did a wonderful job, and you and the writers did a wonderful job of, you didn't pull any punches. You know, I mean, it starts right off from the first, first moments of episode one on through, this is not, for lack of better terms, and, and you said it yourself, you didn't just build your father into some folk hero. It was very honest. I mean, it was a very honest telling and you, you showed a lot and you said a lot and there was a lot of conversations and you showed relationships as you were saying. It was very, it was a real person. It, you know, it wasn't just this facsimile of a hero that everyone has in their mind, which he was to, to most, most everybody. But you gave us the real person in that. And, and I, I'm sure I speak from anyone. I applaud you on that. That can't be easy. No, no. It, it, I mean, it, and I, at the same time, I, I really had to do justice to the people who respected him. You know, yeah. I mean, they, you know, he lived in their home for over 37 years. And, you know, I'm just amazed how, how, they, how they respected him without even knowing him. Yeah. Uh, so I had to do the right thing for the right reasons. And uh, I think I think we did a good job on that. I really do. Even if the show never airs again, I'm proud of the the what was created, you know. That's awesome. Uh, it's it's worthy of of uh of of the time that was spent, you know, throughout all those that worked on the show yeah. from the producers to directors to to writers to cameramen to soundmen to set designers. Sure. Um they they put their heart and soul in it. They really did. And, and feel free to dodge this question if if you don't want to air her thoughts on it. But what did your mom think? She, you know what? She's a good sport. I mean, there's times when uh, I actually had to go to her a couple times and say, "Mom, do you mind if I talk about this, or do you, do you yeah, mind if yeah. I talk about that?" I Can mean, I put this laundry in a TV show? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But she's uh, she's a trooper, you know. She wants to win just like uh, I do, you know. And uh, she she had no problem with it whatsoever. She I was actually I was I was shocked by it because I mean in her position, she could easily say, well, you know, Tony, yeah. I don't want to really want to talk about that. But she's yeah. been very open and honest about her experience with my father and their relationship. And uh, you know, I I uh, I really respect her from that. To, for that. Uh, and we talk about family all the time. And it's important that family shares their their legacy and their and their stories and their photographs um, with the family. I mean, that's how we grow. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't know where we're going until we know where we came from. I mean, most of the time, you know, so I, 
I even teach my own daughter to share uh, her information, and I'm going to share as much as I can so she can share it with her children. You know, and that's sure. how we that's how we grow. You know, so that's how she's my mom has been uh, been been a been a, a real soldier when it comes to that. You know, for sure. That's great. Uh, I love your mom to death, and I just think she's just the sweetest soul. Uh, but that's you act like you know the whole family, man. What's going on Listen, here, man? It's almost like I've done this cruise with you for five or six years now. It's almost <laughs> like it's almost like your your mom and your aunties and everybody have been on this cruise multiple uh, times. Right. Uh, right. Well, she's just a sweet soul, and I think that it's you know it's one thing for a a forty year old to air some laundry. I think it's another thing for a a grown woman who's lived it, been there, done that, and probably put a lot of it to bed, so to speak. You know, I, I applaud her. I'm sure, as, as you're saying you do, that that can't be easy to, to reopen some of those things, good, bad, or otherwise, you, you know, it, it's got to hurt a little bit to open the good memories. You know, you open yeah, all the positive yeah, for sure. stuff. You know, it, there's, a, there's a young woman that plays my, my mother, uh, first name Paris, and she actually got on the phone with my mother many times to talk about what it was like to be married to my father and what the situations yeah. were. And I, you know, I, I, I really wanted that relationship to, to, to develop so that, so that this young woman who was playing my mother didn't had to, could take the guesswork out of it, yeah. you know? So she didn't have to guess. She knew exactly what it felt like, what it is. She understood the complexities of mm -hmm. not only, you know, being married, a man who's 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 working hard to be successful, and the business itself. Yeah. She she understood once my once my mother talked to her, she came away with all those jewels, and she was really able to uh, to expose that in a big way. You know, so we we that that's a lot more homework that I that I was very serious about when it came to those playing my father, uh, Saint Croix Walls, and mm -hmm. and. The woman uh, that played my mother, you know. I'm sure it's got to be unique to see a, an actor play a character who is somebody you know that intimately. <laughs> it's your mom and dad. Absolutely, you, you absolutely. Know it. <laughs> you're watching yeah, that character going. So, so that I don't screw this up. So when we, she, she sees it, if she sees it, her name is Pari Camper. Okay, okay Pari, we got you. Pari, <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. Um, in your mind, so you're going into season two here. How far can this show go? I mean, is it, if it's factually based, you know, it obviously has a shelf life in terms of how far it can go. How far in your mind can you take it? Well, I, I personally think that it can go as long as the audience will accept it. I mean, we've got some wonderful uh, producers, executive producers, Jesse Collins, uh, you know, uh, we've got wonderful writers. BET has been a wonderful partner. Uh, and, you know, as you know, television can be a little tricky sometimes, you know, Very, um, yeah. when it comes to ratings, uh, uh, when it comes to what, what, where networks want to be, yeah. what they want to, uh, who they want, to, who they want to be. Uh, it's, it's what, what these programs cost to, to, to produce, uh, if actors are, are still very open to be involved. I mean, yeah. there's so many different things that that happen uh, when it comes to winners and losers, you know? I mean, there's been some shows that we all know of that that only went three seasons, and that was it. But but to your question, I think it can last as long as we want it to last. I mean, with, with 37, more than 37 years of, of programming, with more than, you know, close to four decades of music. Yeah. Uh, with relationships with artists that my father developed over the years. Um, you know, there are stories all over the place, you know? I mean, uh, but but people these days, sometimes they do get a little complacent, a little tired of the same thing, you know? Sure. So um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, I think before the second season airs, I think it deserves a third season. I just want to tell you that right now. Okay? <laughs> We're just going to put that out there. <laughs> right. 
you gotta I you gotta think, dangle. I think people are gonna be. I think they're gonna be pleasantly surprised at the second season. I really do. I think the second season is the bomb. Really you were saying you were telling me in January that you feel like the second season might arguably be a little bit more explosive than the first season. There's no question about it, and that's all I'm gonna say right now. But, uh, <laughs> um, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's 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 the writing was was spectacular. It really was. Um, uh, it was just unbelievable that uh, they were That's able awesome. to bring out the performances of these actors. Um, and it's real. It, lo it looks real and it is real, you know? Now, shifting gears a little bit. So we know there's going to be a season three, right? Mm -hmm. Season three. Right. Um, people can look for season two. Where can they find season one? Well, you know, it's funny you ask that question. I mean, I think uh, BTX. I believe, which is a, a new uh, programming um, initiative that BT started. I think you can find it on BT Plus, shall I say? Plus. Uh, but I, and I think there's other ways that people find it, and I don't know about those ways. Okay. <laughs> We're not talking about know, those. Ways. I only know what I know. All right. <laughs> well, so I think they, I think they can find it. I know people who have uh, who have recorded all all uh, ten episodes. Uh, from season one, and they're basically going back to watch them. Um, but the second season was eight episodes. Um, so as far as those first ten that they did, that did we did. However, they can find them. More power to you. But you can go get them. <laughs> um, exactly. So uh, you are you're incredibly well respected, and, you, and you've done a great job at being. Well, that's not man. always. That's not always well, true. It's it is when we're on TV, Tony. It is when we're on TV. But how we view you and how I talk about you when we're not on TV is unimportant to everybody here. Um, you're very well respected and you've done such a great job um, growing up in what has to be a challenging shadow. And forgive that term. You know, your father was, was physically and non-physically an imposing figure. You, you know, there's every artist that we've sat on stage with together and I've seen you sit on stage with, you know, on the, on the cruises, on the Soul Train cruises has just these, these larger than life stories about Don. Uh, as, you've, as you've made your own way, I, I think it's, it, it's worth talking about. You, you know, what's it like with your relationships with all these artists that originally had these very intricate relationships with your father? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. I mean, and, and sometimes it, it amazes me that I get somewhat of the same kind of respect that he got because of him. And I, I think that's why we have to appreciate our parents, those that were there for us and the pathways that they've created for us. Um, I, I marvel at that because he did such a good job at, at, at not only respecting people, but, but being respected. Yeah. So, and I, and, and I think most of that came from the fact that he respected the artists. So I think he got back what he deserved, you know? Um, and I do the same thing. I don't, I'm not all up in artists, the artist's face. You know, there's a lot of people who do a lot of that. Yeah, and I, you're not. <coughs> I, I, I try I'll not for to. You. You're not, no, you're, you're not at all. If, if you're gonna be friends with, 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 with these folks, I mean, you have to respect their, their talent and respect what they're after as well, you know? Um, it, it's, it's really, I'm mindful of that all the time, no matter who it is, whether it be, you know, Smokey Robinson or, or, uh, or, or Babyface, you know? I'm very yeah. mindful of their, their abilities, their talent, and, and their time, you know? Um, uh, I had a great time with the Jacksons on uh, last cruise out. I mean, I, I, you know, I've always been a fan of the Jacksons, you know, and yeah. to, to talk to, you know, Jackie and Tito and Marlon, uh, was, was, was a dream for me, you know, yeah. personally. I mean, they, they knew my father very well and, um, uh, they respected him and he respected them, their entire family. And, and I do the same, you know, so I, I always think about my father, how he, that, that he understood that I, I'm on the team as well. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to follow his footsteps as far as his, his being a guy who, uh, who respects artists and respects people, you know? So that's kind of how I feel about it. Did you, and forgive this question, but did you ever feel pressure from it? 
yeah, at course. a younger yeah. age. I mean, but I, let me rephrase that. There's always going to be a pressure. Did you resent the pressure, I guess, at any point in your life when you were younger? Well, hard sometimes to... I did. I mean, growing up, I, I, I wanted to do something other than what he was doing yeah. because there, it just felt like too much attention, you know? Yeah. And then I hated, I always hated when people said, there's Don Cornelius' sons, you know, my brother's, you know, yeah. a couple of years younger than I am. And I hated that, that light, you know? Yeah. Now it's like, if you want to say I'm Don's son, it's fine with me, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I appreciate it now and I, I respect it now because of what it is. And I'm, I'm, I'm not running from it anymore, you know? So I used to run from it, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of pressure. And then, and then uh, there was a lot of uh, situations where people thought I had it good, you know? I had, yeah. uh, I mean, we grew up, you know, in the community just like everybody else, sure. you know? And, uh, when, and when people get to know me, they go, you know what, he's, he's, he's all right. You know, as opposed to he's yeah. spoiled to death or yeah. he's a, he's an asshole, you know? Um, we say that about you, but just to... never to you. <laughs> we just yeah. never say it to you. We say it about you. We just never say it to you. You understand? We just, we try That's to true. say it to each other. I, listen, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of haters out there, you know? Okay. <laughs> but, uh, um, hard to be at the top. You know, you got, as, as, as my father used to tell me, you, you have to let people be who they want to be, you know? So I let people be who they want to be. You know? I think what I appreciate more right now is when you see people for who they really are, right? I, I, there's, in letting people, in letting people be who they, who they're going to be, we, there's a lot of masks, right? A lot of people wear a lot of masks, you know, a lot of neighbors smiling. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good to see you. And then they turn around and they, you know, <laughs> curmudgeon their way back to things. And, uh, I, I love it when you see someone who who they really are. You, you hope that's who you've seen all along, but you know, certain things happen and, and people will take their mask off a little bit and you'll go, aha, aha, Absolutely. hey, there's some truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when, that's, that's, uh, and when you meet people and you, I mean, so many people, whether it be people on the cruise or actual artists, you know, there's, there's a lot of hiding behind masks, but that's that's okay. I mean, it is absolutely. It's, it's just the way it is. We that's how we that's how we get down. You know, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> it is. Well, actually, I'm glad you brought up the cruise. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved and how how the Soul Train cruise came to be. Well, you know, early on, we uh, prior to us um, selling the franchise, there was there was there was conversation about a cruise, a Soul Train cruise. Um, How long ago was this? Oh, God, that probably was in 2000, 2000, uh, let's see, two, I'm going to say 2010, 11, somewhere in there. And my father passed in 2012. Uh, so we've been talking about it <clears throat> some years prior. Um, and uh, a guy by the name of Kennard Gibbs, who uh, who started the uh, the subsidiary for Soul Train after we after we sold it, was in talks with uh, Michael Mitchell, who was at one time with Star Vista. Yep. Uh, started talking about you know a cruise <clears throat> because uh, Time Life Star Vista was starting to get involved in the cruise business. So, you know, uh, they launched the first Soul Train cruise. What did you and think? At the what time, think I was it? not uh, the host of the cruise. I was I was a passenger, just like everybody else. You know, <laughs> you were not a passenger <laughs> like everybody else. First of all, but yeah. <laughs> and and the idea came up with that. Wait a minute, Tony, you you could probably you know help us yeah. in some way, and you know that's kind of how it all began. You know. Um, and now we're we're what uh, seven seven years in eight years in something like ninety three. This is your ninety third cruise uh, next year. Yeah, it, and it, uh, so here we are. Yeah, and it's been it's it's been a, it's been a fantastic ride ever since. You know, and it's been a learning curve also for us for all of us. Yes, it has. Uh, for our Vista people, for myself, for you, for everybody, because. You know, we uh, 
you know, our people are, are complicated in good ways, you know, and we, we gotta, we gotta treat them, you know, we gotta have the right food and the right talent and <clears throat> there, and, there are you know, all those things to make this thing work. So, uh, yeah. you know, we've, we've tried our best to make that happen. And I think we've been successful so far. You know, I, I would agree. I, I think that there's always room. There's, there's, uh, see how popular you are. There's always room to, to be stronger at what we do. And, and that's, that's totally acceptable and understandable. And, and it, honestly, there should be always room to get better, so to speak. Um, but I think the, the program, the franchise has made some great steps, you know, some wonderful steps. And I like, I, I think I, you know, and I always I really say like this it. even on stage that, you know, uh, Alan, um, who, you know, we all know, yep. Alan Rubens, Alan Rubin has done a fantastic job at programming, uh, and executive producing the, 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 the soul train crews. And I appreciate him so much because he really understands, you know, um, yeah. he's done a fabulous job at making sure that we get the right acts for the right reasons. Um, if he listens to me more, he'll be even larger. Okay. <laughs> but no. He's done. He's, he's, he's done a, can you, he's done a can fantastic. Can you mark that down? Just mark that down. Thank you. Yeah. He's done, he's done a fantastic job. So I want to give everybody, you know, you know, Janine yeah. and Janine and Alan are the the, the know, centers and, of the uh, wheel around that. Uh, all the girls, just just the marketing, yeah, uh, crew and just the the, the the folks that's that help out with the cabins and the whole yeah. line. It's just, it's just, there's so many people to thank, you know, what, what's interesting. Uh, it's just that people don't understand how large of a production this really is. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think people recognize your level of involvement and how much you care. Uh, I, I've said this on stage about you and I made you stand there and listen while I was saying it. Don't say and, anything about this red cup. It's orange juice. I'm not okay. talking about your solo. I'm sure it's orange juice in the solo cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sure it is. That's why everyone brings a red solo cup onto, <laughs> onto their interview. Uh, the amount that you care, it, it can't be overlooked. You know, we, with any charter, with any cruise, with any experience, you have trials and tribulations, you have highs and lows, and you have some things you got to, you know, how do we message this or how do we deal with that or how do we talk to folks about this? And, and you know, you're one of the first people that comes to me on a daily basis. And you and I have, I feel like almost every day, you and I have at least a couple minutes of conversation, whether it's backstage before a show or where you, you're involved. You know, I don't want people to think for a second that you're just a figurehead that we, you know, hey, there's, there's a Cornelius, put him out on stage. You know, it's not, it's not that at all. You are very involved, you know, and I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's important to, to, I mean, listen, I, most of the people are coming to me with their complaints anyway, you know? I mean, my air conditioning's out. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you're talking about you know, it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's important because it's, it's part of my, you know, my yeah. life and it's, it's, it's yeah. our reputation. And it's, uh, it's, I care about it because I care about these people. Not only do I care about these people, I want them to get there safely and go back home safely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I learned that a long time ago that this is serious business. You know, it's, yep. um, we're, at, we're out at sea. I mean, you know better than I do, Jason, that, uh, Done it you a few know, years. somebody come, goes off, off ship while we're out at sea, it, there's a big, it's a big problem. The ship's not going to stop. Okay. Um, and, and that stuff really is important to me. I mean, uh, when you talk about care, I mean, I, I, I want these people to have a great time and be safe while they're, while they're cruising, you know? Um, and I care about the artists. I just care about yeah. if, how they feel about the performances, how they, I mean, how do they feel about the audience? I care about you, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Um, it's hard, and I'm not a soft, and I'm not a soft guy, you know. I'm I. Uh, You're the softest you know, guy. I'm a I'm a I'm a pro, I'm pro male. I just want to <laughs> let you know that, okay? No, but seriously, the gorilla um, that beats the chest the loudest <laughs> is always the nicest one. I learned that a long time ago. No, no, no. The only one that makes me feel like a little boy, as I said, is Peebo Bryson. And when I talk to that guy, man, he's so he's so motivating, and he's he's and so, eloquent. Um, he's so real that every time I talk to him, I'm like, I feel like I'm talking to my own man, you know? 
So he, I tell you what, there are certain artists that we have so many legends on that cruise. You, you know, we have so many people that it's easy to admire and love them so much. Uh, and a lot of, most of them have this, but some of them command such a presence, you know, and when you're standing next to them, when you're talking to them, I don't care if they're six, five or five, six, whether it's their voice or their handshake or their eye contact or just their physical stature, there's a presence about them. And Pebo is one of those guys. Pebo has yeah. a presence. Uh, you know, when you see him get, he's very eloquent. He's very educated. He's very well, you know, eloquent, well-spoken. He's very articulate, I guess, what I'm looking for. And I, I've seen him in his dress rehearsals and his dress runs. I've seen him get a little, you know, listen, let's, let's focus up with his, with his band and his techs. And, He's not demeaning and he's not mean and he's not mean spirited, but he gets his point across quick. And I tell you what, I, I was in the back of the room and I felt chat. I felt like I did something wrong. I, put, I was like, should I go apologize too? Like, oh, I don't know. Like, yeah. I get it. I get it. He was a pro. He's a pro. He's, a pro. he's been around he's a, a long pro. time and he knows what he's doing. Uh, that, that, you know, for people that have been around a while and know what they're doing, yeah. they all have the same uh, the same kind of kind of feeling, you know. I mean, my old man was the same way. You know, he he's been around a while and he knew what he was doing. You know, it, it, Pebo also uh, he's such a great friend of the family. You know, in terms of the Soul Train cruise, he's such. I, thank goodness he's he's healthy. Thank goodness yeah. that he pulled through everything all right. I know there was a lot of concern. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you were in contact with him at the time. And is I should ask. I mean, I don't know when the last time you chatted with him. How's he doing? Is he doing well? Yeah, well, you know what? I still I, I owe him a call, and he always gets on me about it because he he, he says, "Yeah, you haven't called me, mate." You know, he called me, mate. <laughs> He's got that but, British thing. Um, I've got his phone number right here, and uh, I'll, I'll be talking to him soon, soon enough. You know, but mm -hmm. uh, right now, you know, you're kind of letting people kind of yeah, let them breathe, figure out how they want to land in their own yeah. homes uh when it comes to this 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 uh this lockdown that we're in as they call it yeah. um so I, you know you have to get people there get people their space you know sure you know it, it, one of the one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you and i wanted to grab a, a chance to to chat with you and, and to to get you on camera too was we do get you know people from the the soul train crews that that call in or email in or text in and all our cruises in reality not just soul train and I thought you'd be a great person to get out in front of some of this, you know, because you are conscious, you are healthy, you're aware of all these things, but you also are a businessman. You're also positive. You're also, you know, forward facing, which I can appreciate. Uh, how do you, how do you view things going forward? Well, I, well, it depends on this. When you say going forward, do you mean going forward as, as a, as a, that we're in this situation we're in or yeah i mean you know right now a, when it comes to the cruise business yeah. or well what? i i will speak for the cruise business and say you know every every year we get a certain number of a number of cancellations regardless of flawless weather or horrible weather or an illness or no illness or there's just there's myriad reasons why people have to pull out whether it's finances or you know yada yada um we haven't seen that drastic of an increase in people removing themselves from the cruise. Not that many cancellations on Soul Train. Some, granted, but not many. And uh, but we do get a lot of questions. We do get people, you know, calling and emailing in, going, "I'm holding my reservation, but talk to me, you know, talk to me." And I can speak to the cruise aspect of it, which I will in a moment. But in terms of of your involvement and in terms of your dedication to the product you're as involved as ever. You're as dedicated as ever to continuing the Soul Train Cruise. And the, the well, for sure. I mean, uh, I, I believe in this, uh, this project. Um, I believe in the people who are, who are involved. Um, I believe we're gonna get through this, this, this situation that we're in. Um, I mean, already there's, I live in California, obviously, and already they say that the curve is flattening and people yeah. are learning to stay home when they're sick. Yeah. Um, which, which I don't think we were doing prior, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. I think, I, I think I've heard maybe one cough out of, in the last three weeks, you know, yeah. I mean, people are really starting to take heed when it comes to their health and, uh, no one wants to be around anybody who's sick, you know, it, it's so, care for others, right? It's, yeah, it's, no it's recognizing right. it's not I've just, you. A lot. I mean, I've learned, I've even learned how to wash my hands like 
in the medical field. You know, I wash yeah. my thumbs. I yeah. wash the back of my hands. Yeah. You know, um, so everyone I think is coming out of this an expert. Learn a whole lot. So I'm in it. I'm in it to win it, no matter what. Yeah. Because uh, I want to be standing. I want us all to be standing when this is over with. You know. Yeah. Um, well, so I my, my dedication is is uh, is is 110. You know, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm 110 percent in. You know, and it's it's interesting because the questions we get, you know, they're not they're the concern is, is the, the concern is very broad, right? You know, it's it's not that it's a horrible term for it, but it's a generalized concern. You know, we haven't we're not canceling the cruise. We're still holding the cruise, but. Can you tell us anything? You know, can you talk to it? Like, can you feed us some information? We get that a lot. And, and I respect and understand people wanting to know, you know, to know what we're thinking, to know what we're seeing. And, you know, I can speak on behalf of, you know, I'm fairly in touch with the cruise industry. And obviously I'm in touch with Starvest Alive and all the charter companies out there when, you know, there's, and this is gonna sound, I'm, I understand how this sounds. There's not a lot of concern going forward everyone's aware of what's happening. It's going to change some protocols. It's going to change how we operate as, as cruise lines, as charters. It's going to change some of what we know cruising to be, you know, speaking off the top of my head, there's some small companies right now in the East that have gotten rid of buffets and say, they'll never have another buffet. Again, everything will be served. Now they'll have buffets, but it'll be a served buffet. No longer can you reach in and serve yourself. Um, you know, things like that, that we know as cruising will change and it has to, it has to right now, but there are ways to adjust and adapt and still continue to do what we love to do. I think that's the beauty of the soul train cruise and any of the charter cruises. It's about the artist, right? It's about being in the presence of the artist and the others around you that love the artists and the music as much as you do. And we still will have that. And we'll still have that. Well, you know, I think it's, I mean, this is a very touchy subject. And yep. I know it's, it's, it's tough to talk about because it's business at the same time. Sure. You don't know how people are feeling, but I think yep. it's also important to talk about it, you know, to, 100%. to let them know how, how we feel, yeah. how, how, what the cruise is doing about it um, going forward. Um, because it's, it's everybody wants to be cared for and cared about. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's uh i'm glad we're 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 bringing it up oh absolutely it's, you know it's important it's very important and, and people do have their own their, their ways of thinking about this kind of stuff yeah but uh i think that i think that the loyalty is still there and, and i'm hopeful that you know going forward we don't know you know what's next i think it's going to get better i mean we're talking about next year exactly uh and and as as someone once told me um you know don't worry until there's something to worry about, you know? Yeah. Um, so right now we're, we're, we're just trying to get through it. And you know, there's a ton of truth in that. And I think that's a great point for people to, to hear and to, to, to remember, because I have to remember this, you know, every time I think to myself, well, God, why can't we just know what we're doing? I remember that, you know, we're trying to figure out right now how the next few months look. And then we will start to sort out what's beyond that. So, you know, I, I recognize that people on the, the Soul Train cruise in January, the Sandy Beaches cruises in January, we have, you know, there's, there's three or four cruises, charters right in that January, February area that people have questions and concerns about. Totally valid. It's just very hard to give a concrete answer right now because, you know, in one minute we hear that cruises is going to be back mid April and then we hear, okay, it's more likely mid May. And, you know, now they're saying, okay, maybe a little longer, but we're not sure the curve is flattening. So, uh, you know, and then of course, if there's a vaccine or a, uh, cures, cures, a, her a terrible term, but you know, if there's a treatment, I guess is a better phrase for it, then it changes everything greatly. But you know, the cruise lines will respond and, I think the beauty of it is the cruise lines will respond with a very stringent set of protocol who can get on, who can't get on, what you have to go through to get on. If you feel this way, what happens? What are the steps? You know, what are the escalation process? Can I touch that? Can I serve myself for this? And there'll be, a, it's, it's going to change the way we cruise, but I, I think it's important to your point that we do say to people that we have absolute faith in January's cruises as of right now. I mean, as of the way things are going, we understand that there's some variables, but I have a lot of faith in, in January's cruises going off without a hitch. You know, it's, yeah. it's still, it's, it's early April. 
Yeah, no, it's funny you mentioned, you talked about the word faith. I've got a friend of mine that, that gave me some really interesting uh, heartfelt um, advice. And he said, between the word faith and the word fear, he's going to go with the word faith, you know? So, and I, and I had to really think about that, you know? And, uh, but faith under, under the guidance of, of, of doing the right thing. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, you 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 have that you have to use that doing the right thing um, as part of the faith. You know, you can't yeah. you can't have faith and do all the wrong things. You know, so we're, <laughs> yeah. we're trying to do, we're trying be educated to do the right things along with faith. You know, so um, again, back to your question, I'm I've uh, I've got faith that we're gonna be we're gonna be okay. You know, I was wonderful. I was I was watching a a, a commercial. Uh, by the NFL, they've got a lot of players yeah. uh, giving messages, yeah. and they got they had a picture, a video of Deion Sanders in his backyard, and he's saying, "I guarantee you, we're going to be okay." And I'm thinking to myself, this guy is so positive. He's yeah. so like, I mean, he breathes positivity, you know. And I think, and I, and that's a lesson. That's a lesson for all, all of us that. We have to stay positive, you know, and uh, it, it taught me a lesson just like that, you know, that I have to be positive, you know, because sometimes we do get, it gets challenging, Sure. you know, looking at the media, seeing what they're saying, you <laughs> I was know, just gonna say that, yeah. uh, it gets, it gets tough. It gets really tough. You know? Well, well, don't worry, uh, Tony, uh, black folks and brown folks can't catch it. So you're fine. You, you got nothing to worry about, right? Just, just follow Not the media. True. They'll tell you, Not they'll true. tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> Right. True. It's it, the media, it, and and I'm not here to take shots at the media because I think there's a lot of wonderful, wonderful outlets and a lot of fabulous reporters and a lot of fabulous media out there. But it is it is hard when we have access so quickly to so much, right? Between yeah. social media and between just going online or whatever. Listen, people know. are being people are reporters who aren't reporters. You know, and that's I mean. my point. That's my point. You know? <laughs> yeah, here's this just in from down on Seventh Street. It's like no, no, stop it. Put your phone down. Yeah, put your phone down. We don't need your help, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you contributing. Uh, well, moving, before we let you go, uh, moving to, to the most important question uh, of our session here, what are you going to be cooking for dinner tonight or tomorrow night? You know what? I, you know, I just talked to my mother the other day, and I'm like, so, Mom, what else can I cook? <laughs> She's yeah. like, go to the pro. Why don't, yeah. you, do, why don't you do some lasagna? Ooh. So I'm going to do some lasagna, but, you know, I'm a... I'm, uh, I'm not a meat eater anymore. I eat yes. plant based. Yes. And they have a lot of plant based uh, plant based material that you need, can eat now. Um, so I actually cook the the black eyed peas with plant based sausage, and I cook the shepherd's pie with plant based burger, and I'll be doing the lasagna with plant based burger. I mean, I so don't. I'm, I'm going to do lasagna. That. I'm going to do lasagna. Okay. How many layers of your lasagna? What do you, I mean, don't, don't give me like two layers and call it a lasagna. Let's, Let's go. say at least three. Okay, at least three. At least three, maybe four. Listen, okay, I'll tell you what. While we're on the <laughs> phone here, while we're on the phone, I'm gonna send you, Just I'm gonna send you my, happen. I'm gonna send you my black eyed peas. My, I'm gonna send you my shepherd's pie. Okay. And my, and my uh, black eyed peas. And, and I'll tell you what, I'll say this to all the folks watching. If and the black, eye, this, the black Eyed Peas, is that's on a video. Okay. That's on video. But yep. the, she, the Shepherd's Pie uh, and, and the cornbread is on, uh, is, is on uh, no, no. I'll send you the, the, the picture of the, the Black Eyed Peas on. on, uh, on You're scanning on, through all your photos of all the food that you've taken pictures of. That's how bored no, you've been the last is, few days. You got, you got to see this. You gotta see this, Jason. This is this is good stuff. Okay, I just sent you okay. black eyed peas, cornbread, and shepherd's pie. Okay, done. Uh, if all the media looks right, I'll I'll even show people pictures at the end of, of the interview. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll tag it in post. Cool, cool. Uh, it looks edible. <laughs> that's all that matters. Not about, it's not about the looks. It's about the taste. It's about the taste. Listen, I'm with you. I am. Look at me. Do I look like I turned down meals? Come on now. Yeah. I am, yeah, I am do. six three two. You're hiding behind pounds. that beard. You're hiding behind that exactly. beard. Exactly. As I get heavier, I just grow the beard out. You were, so you you were talking about hiding behind mask early on, right? 
That's I just grow mine. Yeah. This is my, <laughs> this is my chubby, this is my chubby hider right here. <laughs> yeah. Tony Cornelius, I love you, man. And I really appreciate you taking the time to love do this you with too, us. Man. You, again, man, thank you for all of what you do. And uh, I really appreciate you. I really do, Jason. Well, I appreciate those, are, it. those are kind words, and uh, please know it's reciprocated. Send my love and hello to tell your family. Tell wife I said hello. Tell I will. Wife I said. She's running around with the dogs outside right now because otherwise the dogs <laughs> are way too loud for this. I hope. Listen, I hope she's got her mask on. Okay, that's all I gotta say. She does. She's she <laughs> she's she's well protected just to keep a distance from me. She's doing fine. Uh, for all our folks watching out there, whether you are part of the Soul Train Cruise or any one of Star Vista Live's cruises, thank you so much for tuning in, as always, to All Access Pass from Home. I am your virtual cruise host, Jason, and today I was joined by the one and only Mr. Tony Cornelius. Tony, thank you again for being part of this. We appreciate you. Thank you. Be well. Be happy. Send our love and the same to your family, please, and uh, make sure everyone stays good. To everyone out there, have a great day, my friends. Stay tuned for more, uh, more stuff right here on this channel. See you soon. <laughs>